Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jasmine. So today I've got another franchise zoo episode for you here in Lakefield Zoo. And this is what we were building yesterday. This is the interior of our giant otter habitat. And these two guys are just having a little nap in their indoor space. And I'm just here because it's raining at the minute, so it's not so pleasant outside. But yeah, it looks like it's clearing up now. So I'll show you what we did last episode. This is just the interior bit. The guests can obviously view the otters from over here oh look munch our giant otter is expecting offspring that's really exciting we've got another viewing platform over here for them and then over here they've got a waterfall and then this is their deep dive section and the guests can view them from all around this fence as well we did oh we've got some vet research hang on let's have a look at that so we're getting some points for these giant otters on our research that's really good oh no one of our people is about to inbreed shen is about to breed with Winnie. So Winnie is the mother of Shen. I thought that she can't even have offspring anyway because she's too old. Okay, well, maybe it's just given us a notification anyway, but I'll just put her on contraceptives anyway. And I also noticed whilst I was here, I don't think a beer was one that we meant to keep. So I'm just gonna get rid of him because he's infertile anyway. So he's just taking up valuable space. <laughs> Sorry about that, a beer. Oh, and one of our Barbarusas has just had offspring. Oh, they're so cute. So we've got a little girl, two little girls. Oh, I did get some comments on how to organize breeding programs in this game as well. Yeah, people said that we should only keep baby females, keep them on contraceptives as soon as they are born and then sell all the baby males and then just replace the father when he ages up and dies basically. So that is one way to keep track of gender genetics and to prevent inbreeding as well. So that might be something that we plan to do in the future. In fact, can we even put these babies on contraceptives? Oh look, we've got four little baby meerkats already. Because last episode we got a new breeding pair, so that's really exciting. We can put them on contraceptives, so let's do that straight away because we don't want any inbreeding happening. Okay, oh look, let's have a look at these guys. Oh, they're so tiny and cute. They're so cute. I love the little baby meerkats. Very sweet. Okay, let's increase these ticket prices because how are the meerkats the most appealing? Maybe because they've got babies at the minute and the otters haven't? I swear the otters were the most appealing. But let's increase the ticket prices. Let's go for 17 and then we can make it lower if they don't like it. See, we are getting refunds still. Well, let's see if the guests comment on that. Another thing I wanted to check was just the happiness of these information centres. It says the value is good, but it looks like the queues are possibly too long, so we could get some more because we've got some gaps for them here. So let's do that. Okay, so did a vendor not come with this one? Maybe we need to hire a new vendor too. There's not a new one here, so let's hire a new vendor assign them to the vendor entrance work zone and then whilst I remember lower oh no we can't lower their prices so that's fine but what we do need to add is an extra staff room somewhere let's just put it over here for now and that way it can be near these vendors and then let's edit this vendors entrance to include that staff room because yeah, last episode we were having some trouble with the staff rooms. Okay, so what I'm planning for the next few episodes is once we get the new wetlands pack, I want to add the capybaras and the tapirs as well. The tapirs aren't new with the pack, but the capybaras are, but they can probably, I'm hoping, go in the same enclosure because I've seen them in the same enclosures in real zoos before. So I want to put them here next to the giant anteater because they're the same sort of regional animals. And I'm also really keen to add the Asian short clawed otter and I know we've just added the giant otters but I think it's quite likely that two kinds of otters would be in the same zoo so I'm thinking of potentially adding them here next to the otters so that they can be in the same area. Let me know what your thoughts are of that and whether or not you don't want us to have two types of otters or if you'd prefer a focus on another animal but this episode before we get that pack I would like to add the sun bears so I want to add them here and then for a restaurant to go here so just temporarily I'm gonna make some space for the restaurant so we know kind of roughly where it's gonna go so that's kind of roughly the area where I want the restaurant to be I'm just gonna have a look at the counters I've never used them before so how do we connect it okay so the pathing has to go here for staff oh no that's the counter for the restaurant okay it's quite 
awkward as well. Oh, okay, so these are the individual counters. That's a lot better. And the guests access it through the paths like that. Okay, that's better. Yeah, I think that is roughly the right size for all of these. So let's leave that there. And then have a look on the Zoopedia for the sun bears. They need quite a lot of space. One to two, yeah. Okay, so let's have a look at the market. He's too expensive for us. Oh, they're pretty low quality in terms of immunity. Well, I guess there are only options. So let's just get them anyway. They might get ill. So let's definitely put them in the quarantine. Here they are. So let's center zoo, put them in the quarantine. Oh, we've got some mechanic research complete. So we've got some more food shops. That's perfect timing. And then our giant otter is about to have offspring. So let's just go and enjoy this. Look! <laughs> It's had a little baby. Is it just the one? It is. Oh, and it's a little girl. Oh, she's so adorable. So tiny as well. I don't think I've actually seen the babies for these, like, at all. I don't know why. I just haven't. So we actually got a name suggestion in the comments for these two last episode. And it was a female name suggestion as well, which is perfect. So I'm going to just rename her Flo whilst we are here, because I do remember that being a suggestion. So that's perfect. Maybe they're our most popular animal now. Let's have a look. Yes, they're our most popular animal again. Take that, meerkats. Okay. <laughs> Baby otters are much cuter. So these two are ready. So I'm just going to start building then, I suppose. And I will catch back up with you when we are done. Okay, so we are back in build mode and I'm really happy with how the sun bear enclosure turned out in the end. I was very much inspired by the sun bear enclosure at Colchester Zoo in the UK and I've mentioned Chester Zoo a couple of times on this channel before, especially in relation to this zoo as a source of inspiration, but Colchester Zoo is actually the biggest zoo that is local to me and so I go there roughly once a year. So I'm really quite familiar with it and in the sun bear enclosure at Colchester, the train in the enclosure enclosure is really quite steep and like this one that I'm building now there's a place to view the bears at the bottom of the hill and then at the top of the hill is the bears indoor enclosure with lots of climbing structures in there and I've been wanting to add some more variety to the train levels in the zoo for quite a while now so I thought this design was a really good way to do that and it would also mean that the restaurant we're going to build is going to have a really nice backdrop in terms of viewing the sun bears whilst the guests are eating so I I thought that would be a nice place to put them and I also have in mind a specific design for the entrance walkway into the sun bear indoor enclosure as well and that will look really similar to the one that's at Colchester Zoo so that's something that I'll probably do in future episodes I didn't end up building it in this one but I think I will wait until we add an animal on the other side of that walkway just to spread out the content a little bit and because the design of it will depend on how much space the other animals need for their indoor section so I've just left that for now and when I was building I changed the design of the indoor enclosure and the star facilities buildings quite a lot and I ended up doing a few things off camera as well in terms of like the roofing and some of the exterior details just because I tend to think of things after I've finished filming but you can see in my build footage that I also switched the colour and texture of the exteriors back and forth a lot as well mainly because I wanted to make the design of the build different enough from some of the other buildings that we've seen so far in the zoo so for example I changed the colour of the roofing on the facilities building to something we've not seen before. I also added some of the distressed details that we got in the European patch, the roof. I think they were actually like the mildew pieces or the ones that are automatically green. Those are the ones that I used and so that just makes it look a little bit more worn and more realistic and this isn't something that I've done yet in the rest of the zoo. So the Lakefield Zoo is supposed to be a really quite realistic looking zoo, not necessarily a super attractive one. So I think it fits quite well with the style, especially in the UK because we have a lot of rain and so that creates it's like a lot of mould and a lot of wear and tear. So I'm tempted to even go back and add some of this to some of our old builds that we've done so far in the zoo. Maybe similar details on the roof but also maybe on the walls where the animals might have damaged or muddied up the walls a little bit just to make it look a little bit more realistic and detailed. And I was also thinking of adding another animal within the other half of the sun bears indoor enclosure so if you have any ideas for which animal you would like to see there let me know down in the comments below. But I was thinking 
thinking possibly orangutans. I don't know if they would work because they would be really nice, but I might have to extend the building out a little bit more in order for them to fit. But that is completely possible. In fact, it might actually help for the entrance of the building. But yeah, let me know what you think of that and if you have any other ideas of what might be better. I also made some custom climbing structures for the sun bears in their interior section, but also outside as well. And you might notice that they're a little bit wonky and this is because for some reason I started with the rope pieces first and then I based the angles of the wood beams on the rope pieces whereas I should have started with something on the grid first and I do go back and adjust the wood pieces to make them neater but for some reason they still end up looking a little bit wonky so I don't know why that is but I've already added all of the climbing structures that I created in this episode as isolated blueprints on the steam workshop so I will link both of these in the video description below in case you are interested. However, I haven't created a blueprint for the sun bear enclosure as a whole or for the indoor enclosure building because the building is still unfinished so I didn't really want to upload it before it was done. That might be something that you see from me in the future once we've added a few more animals to this area. And after using those lighter timber wooden beams to make the sun bear's climbing structure, I'm kind of tempted to go back and redo the capuchin monkey's climbing structure to match it. But I don't know, let me know if you prefer how it is now down in the comments because I do like it how it is and I'm not sure if it will necessarily work if I change it so we'll see. Also last episode after changing the fencing near the capuchin monkeys area we had some trouble with them escaping so I kind of don't want to touch their area especially that indoor section because we've only just managed to keep them safe and enclosed so yeah maybe it's best not to touch them. But before building the sun bear enclosure I was also looking for inspiration for the restaurant design as well but I honestly have no idea what to do for it yet. I don't want the architecture to look too fancy or expensive but I also would like it to be slightly more polished and more contemporary looking than some of the other buildings we've got currently around the zoo particularly the enclosure buildings because they're a little bit cheap and cheerful aren't they especially like the timber ones look pretty simple and pretty functional but I think a restaurant is the type of building that a zoo might invest in and spend a little bit extra money designing and making sure the guests have a really nice experience in so yeah I might try and make a slightly nicer looking building than so far in this zoo so if you have any nice ideas for designs then please do let me know either down in the comment section or feel free to join my discord server too because I've got a channel for planet zoo inspiration in there so that would be really helpful if you do have any pictures or something like that but that's basically everything I wanted to say in terms of the build in this episode but I also really wanted to mention the new pack that's been announced for Planet Zoo so there's a new pack coming out on the 12th of April and it's going to be the wetlands animal pack so that means there'll be eight different animals which have all been announced and they are the capybara which I'm super excited about the platypus the water buffalo the red crowned crane the Asian small clawed otter the spectacles caiman the Nile lechway and the Danube crested mute. I don't know if I said all of those right but these animals all sound really good to me and I've seen the pictures that Frontier have released on Twitter as well and they all look really good. The animal I'm most excited about is easily the Asian small clawed otter and that's because it's one of my favourite zoo animals if not my favourite zoo animal alongside fennec foxes and red pandas and I've wanted them in Planet Zoo for so long so I'm so excited to be finally getting them. I am a little bit annoyed that we only just added the giant otters in the zoo and then my favourite type of otter was announced to be released in a new pack because if we hadn't have added the giant otters I would have just added the Asian small clawed otters and not the giant otters but I don't see why we can't have both in the same zoo because I know Chester Zoo which is obviously a big inspiration for the zoo has both of these two types of otters specifically they have giant otters and Asian small clawed otters too and Colchester definitely has two types of otters as well but not the giant otters so I think I will end up putting the two otter enclosures next to each other as well because in real life zoos tend to put similar animal groups near each other to make it easier for keepers managing certain types of animals together so hopefully you don't mind me doing that and you don't feel like there's too much otter content on my channel recently. 
and I'm also really pleased to be getting the capybaras as well, as well as the platypuses. I know a lot of people have wanted both of them in the game for a long time, and like I mentioned earlier, I plan on adding the capybaras to the zoo. I probably won't add the platypus, at least not right away, maybe later on in the series. I'm also really happy about the crane that we're getting. I think this is a really nice addition, and I might end up adding them to Lakefield Zoo at some point in the future. And then the rest of the animals, I wasn't really that familiar with any of the other ones that we're getting in this pack so I wasn't as excited about them for that reason but I think they all look really nice like I said and the pack has a really nice variety of animals as well but I would love to know which animal you are most excited about and if you would like me to build for any of the animals that I haven't mentioned to be added to Lakefield Zoo because I can always just do a one-off enclosure for them as opposed to adding them to a specific series so yeah let me know if you have any favourites down below. Then I think I mentioned this at some point in this video as well but I've been getting loads of bugs and glitches in my game recently and I think it's because our zoo is getting bigger and busier as well and glitches kind of tend to become more common when there's more going on in your game just in general and it might even be my PC and not the game itself but sometimes when I start the game it doesn't recognise that the otters have any deep diving water sections at all or that the capuchin monkeys have any climbing objects which is just not the case they obviously do and they've worked fine without me making any changes in game at all so to fix that I just have had to restart my computer or the game or just move an object slightly to the left or something like that just to make the game realise that the objects do exist. But I just wondered if anyone else is experiencing this or knows of anyone experiencing this. Oh I also get one where I get a notification saying the keepers can't reach their enclosures even though they can and the work zones are set up perfectly and the keepers are assigned to the work zones and the traversable areas all fine too. It's just really weird and I think I've mentioned one before as well about the quarantine not working sometimes after an animal passes the quarantine but yeah I just wondered if these were like known bugs or if it was just my PC and then something else that I was wondering about in terms of zoo management for future episodes as well was marketing in the zoo. So I noticed in game that we had a score for our marketing level, but this wasn't part of the guest happiness rating system. So I'm guessing that it's not connected to guest happiness as well, but I wondered if anyone knows anything about this or whether it impacts the guests at all, or if it's just a matter of us increasing the number of guests in the zoo, because this could be an option for the future if we ever need to make more money. or it might be to do with some of the animal camera features that have been added to the game recently and I know we are getting an update for these in the 1.9 update that's coming with the wetlands animal pack so I'm really excited about that and there we should be able to manage all of our video and audio devices better including animal cameras so I might start adding a few of these at some point into our zoo to increase our marketing level so if you have any suggestions or ideas about that then please let me know down in the comments below but that is pretty much everything that I wanted to say in this voiceover so I will stop talking now and I will catch up with you back in real time. Okay so I've just finished building the sun bear enclosure and apparently guests think tickets are underpriced again which is good news because we've only just raised them so how about we say 19 zoo dollars and keep the child the same and see if that helps. While we're here we may as well have a look at our income and expenses. So we are getting some zoo entrance ticket refunds actually that might be because we're not meeting our guests needs so our education level is low so is our first hunger and happiness level. I'm doing my best to increase education and like I said before we can add some roaming educators probably in the next episode once that becomes a new feature but maybe we could in the meantime add some food and drink shops. So we've got this bake shop over here and they're all really busy it looks like. We have unlocked a few more recently. Look, what have we got now? We've, so we've got ice creams hot dog and pizza so let's get one pizza one then let's get one more drink shop I will add to vendors entrance okay so hopefully that sorts out that oh yes we should probably take a look at what we built so they're inside their indoor section that's good so this is their indoor section so you can see I built some custom climbing structures for them I did use some of the rope work from a blueprint that I downloaded off the scene workshop so I will try and link that original blueprint that I used in this video description box below in case you were interested but yeah this is what the interior of 
what the build looks like. We're probably going to add another enclosure over here. We've got some vet research. Hang on, I'll just sort this. So we've got quite a few done on the giant otter. I might have someone else start on the sun bear and then we can switch them over once we complete the otter. So yes, we might have another enclosure for this second half of the building. It could be like a tortoise or like an indoor sort of animal. It could be some exhibit animals, maybe just an education area. It could be maybe a monkey or something like that. But then out here, I was thinking we've got this section next to the sun bears that is just this big blank empty space. And I've also left this bit because I want to have a nice sort of entrance to the sun bears, but I won't do that yet. I will wait until we add an enclosure here. And I was thinking possibly the Binturong because they came in the same pack. They're in similar regions, aren't they? So that might be nice. Okay, we've got another one for the North African theme. So how about let's get a mechanic on another theme. Oh, I want more drink shops as well. So yeah, this section is probably going to be for the Binturong or another animal. And then over here, this is where I wanted to have the restaurant. Oh, actually, whilst I do this, I'm just going to add some temporary education because this will obviously not stay the same. We are going to create a restaurant here, like I said. And once we figure out the details of the structure, this will all change and we'll kind of lower this. Yeah, this will either be the side of a building but I am wary that it might cast a shadow over the enclosure so it might be nice to have a small fence with a terrace for some seating area here and then the building to be further back. So that's my plan over here but obviously I only started working on the sunbed enclosure this episode. This is what the outside area looks like. I reuse a lot of these climbing structures that we saw indoors. They've got a bit of a, a moat <laughs> partly because I think it will help with fencing when we come to building the restaurant. I may May end up making this look more natural. Let me know what you think down below, whether you prefer a more natural or more artificial water section. But yeah, this is what the sun bear enclosure looks like. And these guys look like they're running to avoid the rain. So let's have a look at them. They're so cute. And this is like our first big animal really in the zoo, isn't it? I saw a comment about the fact that we've got quite a lot of small animals. And I'm sorry if that's frustrating any of you, because personally, I just much prefer small animals. So I feel like they are, for me, the showstoppers, but I know not a lot of people feel that way. A lot of people prefer the big cats, your elephants and your giraffes and things like that. So it's nice to have these guys in a zoo. They're so cute as well. I do love bears, I must say, and they've got such funny tongues. I can't wait to see some of their more interesting animations. I was a little bit worried that they wouldn't be able to use these climbing structures because I wasn't sure if they looked suitable for bears or not because they look kind of more like monkey climbing structures in a way don't they but let me know what your thoughts of that are down below and we've got all of their work zones set up I did that off camera so we've got an extra keeper for them and they've got their own sort of staff section oh I think I redid some of the roofing off camera it was just flat but I thought it looked a little bit better if it had some sloping to it and I did that in the exact same way that you've seen me doing other roofings in previous episodes for this zoo I think we might have to have a look at some of our animals soon it looks like my little baby anteater is now an adult. I've also been having a load of bugs and glitches with traversable area in game. Let me know if you've been having this as well. I've been able to fix it by restarting the game and restarting my computer as well. That's been helping. But last episode I mentioned I was struggling with the deep water and the giant otters. I've also been struggling with the climbable areas and the monkeys as well. I don't know why that's happening. But yeah, let me know if you know why that is and if we can fix it somehow permanently. Okay, so how about we release this animal to the wild. It'll be nice to start releasing some animals to the wild and get some conservation credits. Not that we are lacking because just by logging on we get them. But yeah, it'd be nice to increase our conservation status, wouldn't it? And whilst we're here, let's have a look at the other animals. So we need to get rid of some more of these. Quick trade them. Then we can quick trade these as well. And then how about these? So we want to keep Indy and Shen. Well, we named Abel. We named Augustine, Pip and Felix. So let's just get rid of these two. Let's release them to the world. Why not? 
Oh, I also want to make sure that we have this set to every six months for the mechanic to check them. Hmm, we're starting to get some mechanics with some high workloads, so how about we just train a couple of them? Vendors still have really high workloads, don't they? So let's just train up that one so that it's a three star. This is another glitch that keeps happening. It keeps saying this. Keeper cannot reach habitat for both the otters and the giant anteaters, but they can. So I don't know why it keeps saying that so I'm just going to dismiss them. <laughs> the queues over here still look pretty long so I might, considering our guest needs, get even more food and drink stalls. What do we need? Drink really. How about we just get a couple of vending machines and we could also have like an ice cream. How about that? So let's have a look at some name suggestions because we did get some in the comments for previous videos for some sunbears. We have three name suggestions for sunbears. Tiba, Teddy and Albus. So Teddy and Albus both sound like boy names. So we could name the girl Tiba, which I think is really cute. And then how about Teddy for the boy? And then if they have a baby, we could call it Albus. That might be cute. And then all of the other name suggestions that we got are for animals that we haven't got in the zoo yet. Or for example, for the key file that we haven't got any new ones yet to name. Oh no, someone is stealing money. So we need more security guards. I didn't realize that was even a thing. So let's add some security guards. So maybe we should just add two more? I don't know. I don't know what is a good amount. See, it doesn't say that their workload is high. That might be because I've just added enough people. So we'll see. Okay, so we need to check on our babarusas. So yeah, we just lost our mail. We could get rid of this one that we got from Frontier Zoo and then just buy a new mail. I think I might do that. We'll need to quick trade her and then we'll go to the animal market and we need a mail, don't we? He looks really good. So I'll adopt him and I will put him in the quarantine. And yeah, I was a bit nervous that we didn't have enough guests, but it looks okay. I think I've done quite a good job of spacing out the pathing. So it doesn't look as busy as it would do if the pathing was smaller and there were fewer lanes, if that makes sense. So like I've got sort of double lanes, haven't I, in between all these trees and stuff. Yeah, we're not turning anyone away. Okay, so the food level has gone up now. We just need more drinks, really. That's still an issue. And that's because there are vendors on break. So actually, what we could do is just hire more vendors. So if I just hire two more vendors, then that will cover the staff when they're on their break. We've got so many vendors now. <laughs> vendors entrance will also train you up. Oh wow, our p file is about to have an offspring already and this new Babarusa is already done in the quarantine. So I'm going to send them to the trade centre and then send them to the habitat because it keeps being awkward like that. Oh, and we also had a name suggestion for a male Babarusa, which was Bruno. So this is now going to be Bruno and we'll move him into here. And our p file has had offspring and we've had plenty of white p file babies. We had some name suggestions for some white pea fowl a few episodes ago so we've got one suggestion for lily and one for snow white and luckily we've got three girls so this one can be called lily and this one can be called snow white and we will put them on contraceptives and then we will want to trade him those i think because winnie is getting quite old now i know she was kind of our original white pea fowl so i kind of don't want to get rid of her but i think i will because we've got so many now i think we just need to sort of get rid of a few of them so i'll release her to the wild which is sad but she'll be all right it's a bit dangerous in terms of a disease risk in their enclosure sometimes if there's too many of them in there so i know we named some of these but i might get rid of abel and hip and keep Felix. So we've got two of each. I think that's fair. I know we've named these, but we enjoyed them whilst we had them. So let's release them to the wild. And that way, if they keep having babies, then they'll have some space in that enclosure for them to do so. Okay, so we've got some more mechanic research. Oh, look at this cutie. It's so sweet. I'm so happy that they had little baby. So that is pretty much it for this episode. That is all I wanted to do. So I am going to head off now, I think. And like I say, next episode, we're probably going to see the capybara and the tapir and then the Asian short clawed otter. That's what I'm planning on doing next. That will be our first look at the wetlands animal pack. As always, I really hope you like this video. Let me 
me know what you thought of the build and the zoom management down in the comments below let me know if you have any tips or tricks if you like this video please like comment and subscribe thank you so much for watching i will see you next time bye everyone